Hey up everyone, so today's movie I'm going to be discussing on the channel is the latest film from writer-director Sean Durkin, who gave us The Nest. His latest film is called The Iron Claw and is a heart-wrenching, true-life story about a family of professional wrestlers known as the Von Erich family. They were based in Denton, Texas, and during the 70s and 80s they really made a name for themselves in the world of professional wrestling. I had literally zero prior knowledge of the Von Erich family before I watched The Iron Claw. I wasn't into wrestling as a kid, so yeah, I hadn't heard of who they were. But after watching The Iron Claw and finding out about this family's accomplishments and the tragedies that they endured, I was on Wikipedia in a heartbeat, like literally minutes after the movie ended to find out everything I could about this family. This is how devastating their story actually was, okay? There was so much tragedy surrounding this Von Erich family that Sean Durkin actually had to make the creative decision to emit or erase one of the Von Erich siblings from the storyline altogether. Even though that sibling also endured some tragedy and grief of their own, Sean Durkin actually had to write them out just for the purposes of keeping the movie compact and condensed to like a two hour and 12 runtime. Isn't that kind of crazy that there was enough tragedy in this family's story that there was enough to spare, to leave out on the cutting room floor? Honestly, this is one of those films where the less you know about it before you watch it, the better. Like, don't go researching anything about the Von Erich family or the film. Go watch it knowing as little as possible. In fact, you shouldn't even be watching this review. I'm obviously not gonna spoil anything for you guys, but you shouldn't need any more information uh, other than this is 100% a film that you should go watch in cinemas. So yeah, I'm giving you the chance to click off this review now, go watch the movie, come back if you like, then we can discuss. All right, so for those of you that are still here, this movie was incredible. I've only seen Sean Durkin's previous film, The Nest, and I wasn't quite sure how I felt about that film, but with The Iron Claw, he has made a beautiful and brutal, <laughs> Brutiful, yeah, new word, new subgenre of movie was just born on this channel, yeah? Let the history books be known that this is where it started, yeah? That The Iron Claw is a brutiful watch. It goes alongside with Andrew Haig's All of Strangers, which is also in cinemas right now. God, there would be a double bill that would break you. <laughs> I love both of those movies, but I wouldn't recommend watching them back to back. I am going to keep things vague because this is a spoiler-free review, but The Iron Claw is essentially a true life story of generational trauma, toxic masculinity, the fraternal bond of brotherhood, as well as a cautionary tale on the price of desperately seeking success. Led by an almost tyrannical patriarchal father figure, Fritz, who's played by Holt McCallany, the Von Erich boys consisted of Kevin, played by Zac Efron, Kerry, played by Jeremy Allen White, David, played by Harris Dickinson, and Mike, played by Stanley Simons, and they were raised in a competitive household, where their father, a former pro wrestler himself, pushed his boys to be the strongest, the toughest, and the most successful star athlete wrestlers, going as far as ranking his boys and manipulating them to compete for not only glory, but the father's love and approval. The Iron Claw refers to his signature move back when Fritz was a professional wrestler, which he has passed down to his boys. But it also acts as a metaphor for the grip and control that he had over his boys and the pressure that he put on them. Oh yeah, it's the Claw! <laughs> Nothing can stop the claw! Uh-oh, you found the claw's only weakness. Sub-zero temperatures! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, had to be done. Does anybody know the movie I'm referencing? Let me know in that comment section down below. Bonus points to anyone who can tell me which actor from the Iron Claw is also in that movie that I just referenced. Anyway, Fritz is the prime example of a parent trying to fulfill their own dreams through their kids. And he won't stop until a Von Erich has won the heavyweight champion of the world wrestling belt, which he himself never managed to win. The Von Erich boys did triumph in the ring, but the family was also met with numerous tragedies, which led many to believe that there was this Von Erich family curse. Sean Durkin really does set up the idea of this curse early on in the film, and it gives you that sense of foreboding that something terrible is going to happen throughout the film. But when it does finally happen, it just kind of snowballs one thing after the other. Which is why a lot of people will feel the need to Google the Von Erich family once they've seen this movie. And that's all you really need to know about the plot. This movie knocked the wind out of me. It's the type of movie that I needed a few minutes just to sit in the cinema after it finished 
to fully absorb it and gather myself. It is definitely a contender for biggest tearjerker of the year. Even the burliest of men will probably get a little choked up in the final scenes. The acting in this is remarkable from everybody. This is a perfectly cast ensemble. All of the boys have that genuine brotherly love and bands. Like you can feel the connection between them all because Sean Durkin actually takes the time to establish them, to see them bonding, you know, enjoying beers whilst tubing on a leisurely summer's day on a lake, or see them sneaking out of the house to go to a concert to support the youngest brother, Mike, who's in the band. It's why the film hits as hard emotionally as it does, because it puts in the legwork to make you care. You feel the love between them, you feel attached, and so, when tragedy strikes later in the film, you personally feel affected by it, like they were your own kin. So yeah, hats off to all the brothers, they were brilliant. This is without question the best performance I have seen from Zac Efron, period. Like it's gonna be weird when we look back in 10 years and go, oh, remember when Zac Efron didn't get an Oscar nomination for the Iron Claw because the movie came out just a little bit too late and didn't have time to catch fire? It's a real shame because this is an Oscar nomination worthy performance in my opinion. Like Efron is the heart of this film and he is so committed. Not just physically, like he is giving Christian Bale a run for his money for the actor who goes through these mega physical transformations for the roles that they're playing. But he's also very restrained here in a way that feels quite plausible if you were a son of a father who was constantly telling you to ball your emotions up and not to cry. Kevin can't really express himself or hold a conversation for that matter when Lily Jane's character Pam starts flirting with him. He's kind of endearingly awkward around girls, which is so funny when you juxtapose that with his charismatic persona that he puts on when he's in the ring, you know, playing to a crowd. So yeah, Zac Efron, well done, mate. You smashed it. Holt McCallany is one of those character actors who I've seen pop up in lots of different things like Greenland, Fight Club, and Sully, but he's never really been given the material to shine, which is why it's always nice to see, you know, someone off to the side given the material to really thrive, and he absolutely crushes it as the patriarchal figure Fritz. This will definitely go down as one of his most beloved performances because he's playing such a complex father figure who's tough, who's a pusher. He really does love his boys, but his methods to raising them and training them aren't very healthy. He does impose a lot of toxic traits on his boys, but that's because he thinks he is doing right by them, which is what makes him interesting. Holt McCallany is tremendous in this part, and it's another career best performance, I'd say. And I hope because of the success of The Iron Claw that this role will help him get even more bigger and juicier roles in subsequent projects. I would have liked a little bit more from the female characters, Lily James as Pam and Maura Tierney as the boy's mother, Doris. They're both great in this, and they do a lot with very little, but they do feel a bit more passive to the story than the boys are. I also really admired Sean Durkin's direction. He shoots some really cool sequences in this, particularly in the wrestling ring. There's this one montage sequence where the boys are on the up, and he keeps the camera constantly moving to the rhythm of the wrestlers in the ring as they're flipping and flying. It's almost like a choreographed dance, which you know, works hand in hand because, you know, a lot of wrestling is staged. There's some impressive one takes in this, and I also loved the symbolic shot of three of the brothers being layered over each other in one take after a match. It sort of subliminally tells the audience that while they are a team, they are all still sort of like competing against each other for daddy's approval. Yeah, I thought Durkin's direction was very confident and very assured. I don't actually have much in terms of negatives, but I will say when I did go on Wikipedia after I watched the film and found out about that brother who was just, you know, erased from the entire story, it did kind of bother me a little bit. But part of me goes like, well, I can understand Sean Durkin's reasoning for wanting to make the movie more compact. But at the same time, part of me's like, well, if you're gonna tell this family's story, then shouldn't the whole family be part of the story? Because it's kind of like he is erasing one person's story, their grief, their loss, their tragedy, and it just seems a little disrespectful. But then I go back to the argument that there is already a lot of agonizing pain for the audience while they watch this film, and <laughs> adding any more almost feels like familial trauma porn. So yeah, I can kind of compartmentalize the decision to exclude one of the brothers from the story. I don't fully agree with it, but um, I can understand why he did it. I do want to quickly talk about the Iron Claw's relationship to award season and the fact that it's not really been acknowledged like at any awards ceremonies this award season, which is 
kind of baffling. Like this film ticks so many boxes of what the, the Academy would usually go for, you know, a real life tragic um, sports biopic drama with lots of transformational performances in it as well. But it's fascinating that The Iron Claw is a film that received zero attention from the Academy. It's one of those movies that somehow slipped through the cracks because of the timing of its release, as well as, you know, A24 having the hands full of campaigns for other films like Past Lives and The Zone of Interest. But yeah, in another year, I could have seen The Iron Claw being a huge contender at the Oscars. I could have seen nominations for Best Actor, Zac Efron, Supporting Actor for Holt McCallany, Screenplay, Editing, Best Director, Best Picture. But sadly, it just wasn't meant to be. And so The Iron Claw is gonna be one of those movies that you see pop up in like a random Buzzfeed article saying 10 great movies that shockingly got zero Oscar nominations. Yeah. So yeah, I am a little myth that The Iron Claw and All of Us Strangers are two brutal movies that have got zero Academy recognition. How do you guys feel about its exclusion from the Oscars? What categories do you think it should have been nominated for? Whatever you have to say, do let me know in the comment section down below. So let's ask them three questions. Firstly, would I watch this again? Absolutely. I, even though I know how brutal this movie is, I really did love this film. I was in awe by how affected I was by it. And I don't even like the sport of wrestling. I guess the reason why I connected with it is because at the core of the film, it's it's a story about family and grief and loss. And those things are universal. It is a sad movie, but sometimes I love watching a great sad movie. It just makes me feel alive. So yeah, I will be watching The Iron Claw many more times throughout my life. Question two, do I recommend it for you guys? All my days, yes. To everybody, please go see this film in a cinema. If you need a film to check that your heart is still working, watch The Iron Claw. Fair warning from me, it is devastating, but it is also very tender and moving. If you like those sort of hard-hitting sports movies like The Wrestler or Foxcatcher or movies about, you know, striving for success like Whiplash or Black Swan, then yeah, this is a movie for you. And third question, what score would I give out of 10? The Iron Claw is a film that will have your heart in a chokehold. Like the acting is beautiful, it's expertly shot, and it's just such an emotionally impactful and powerful film. So I'm gonna give The Iron Claw a score of 9.5 out of 10. Please go watch this film, guys. It is a film that I think everyone should watch at least once before they die. But as always, guys, it's just one bloke's opinion. I want to hear from you. Have you seen The Iron Claw? If you have, how did it make you feel? Whatever you have to say about this movie, let me know in that comment section down below. If you're a fan of this video, help me out by hitting a little thumbs up button. If you want more movie, TV, and Oscars-related content, don't forget to click subscribe. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. For more things related to movies, TV, the Oscars, and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Carefield, and I'll see you next time. Nothing can stop the clown!